All right, welcome, friends, members of St. John, uh, also our day school children. This is uh, an attempt to do our daily devotions. These are the devotions that we send home each week in our congregation at prayer, which is the blue sheet here. Uh, we send those home, and uh, our families pray these at home, but also our day school children pray them in their classrooms, respectively. So uh, we're going to do something eh, maybe new during the break here, is share these uh, devotions uh, that would normally happen in the classroom, but share them through the miracle of modern technology. So uh, we're glad to have you join us, whether you're a member or not. And what I've tried to do here to make it a little bit easier is on the screen here. Yeah, there, the Congregation of Prayer. I've printed out almost all the parts. Uh, you won't even need a Bible or a hymnal uh, to follow along. So that should make it a little bit easier for you. All right, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm for this week is Psalm 73, and we'll pray this responsively. So join in on the second half of the verse. Truly, God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the arrogant, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For they have no pangs until death. Their bodies are fat and sleek. They are not in trouble as others are. They are not stricken like the rest of mankind. Therefore pride is their necklace. Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes swell out through fatness. Their hearts overflow with follies. They scoff and speak with malice. Loftily they threaten oppression. They set their mouths against the heavens, and their tongue struts through the earth. Therefore his people turn back to them and find no fault in them. And they say, How can God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked. Always at ease they increase in riches. All in vain have I kept my heart clean and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long I have been stricken and rebuked every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, I would have betrayed the generation of your children. But when I thought how to understand this, it seemed to me a wearisome task. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I discerned their end. Truly, you set them in slippery places, you make them fall to ruin. How they are destroyed in a moment, swept away utterly by terrors. Like a dream when one awakes, O Lord, when you rouse yourself, you despise them as phantoms. When my soul was embittered, when I was pricked in heart, I was brutish and ignorant, I was like a beast toward you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fa may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you shall perish. You put an end to everyone who is unfaithful to you. But for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Each week we also have a appointed verse um, that we try to memorize, and this week it is Psalm 26, verse 8. Say it with me. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. All right, maybe we'll say it again, <laughs> just for the sake of memory. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. It's a little awkward. I can't hear you respond, so I trust that you are speaking. <laughs> Our catechism this week is a combination of commandments one through three and the table of duties to bishops, pastors, and preachers. So, commandments, say it with me. You shall have no other gods. 
you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Now the table of duties. The Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9.14 Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Galatians 6, 6 6-7 The elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, Do not muzzle the ox while it is treading out the grain, and the worker deserves his wages. 1 Timothy 5, 17-18 Each week we also have a set of readings that are assigned. Each day uh, a first and second reading, the first reading being a narrative where we read continuously, and actually the second reading right now is continuous as well uh, from the Passion according to St. John. So, John 12. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks, So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. There ends the reading. And our narrative reading is from uh, the Exodus. This is chapter 19. Yesterday was chapter 18. We continue. On the third new moon, after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain. While Moses went up to God, the Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am coming to you in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you, and may also believe you forever. When Moses told the words of the people to the Lord, the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. And you shall set limits for the people all around, saying, Take care not to go up into the mountain or touch the edge of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. No hand shall touch him, but when but he shall be stoned or shot, whether beast or man, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and consecrated the people, and they washed their garments. And he said to the people, Be ready, for the third day do not go near a woman. On the morning of the third day there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast, so that all the people in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire. 
The smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kiln, and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And, as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him in thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people, lest they break through to the Lord, to look, and many of them perish. Also let the priests who come near to the Lord consecrate themselves, lest the Lord break out against them. And Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai. For you yourself warned us, saying, Set limits around the mountain and consecrate it. And the Lord said to him, Go down and come up, bringing Aaron with you. But do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to the Lord, lest he break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. There ends the reading. So in our classrooms, um, we try to do age-specific conversation where we go through uh, the reading, discussing maybe some finer details. And uh, it's hard to do that now because it's can't really do an interactive question and answer here. I suppose we could if we did it live and uh, had chat running. And we'll see how long we're told to stay home. Maybe we'll fall to that eventually. So I'm going to ask some questions and give you a chance to answer, and we'll see how it goes. All right. So when did the Israelites arrive at Sinai? And uh, we can scroll back and look at the text, and we'll just see. It says here, on the third new moon, in other words, the third month after they left Egypt. Now, uh, is the content of verses 5 through 6, you can see here at the top. Now, therefore, if indeed you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to all the people of Israel. Question is, are those words law or gospel? Is it a command from the Lord or is it um, a gift of good news from the Lord? Well, it's law. <laughs> if you disobey his voice and do not keep his covenant, then <laughs> it will not go well with you. Um, but for those who are given faith to trust in the Lord by the Holy Spirit, you will be, or you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. You will, you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That's gift language. So gospel. What does God mean when he says, obey my voice and keep my covenant? Well, I kind of spoiled it right there. Obey my voice and keep my covenant right here in verse 5. That means to remember the Passover and have faith in the words and promises that God has made. How is this connected directly to what will happen later in Exodus 32? That's the story of the golden calf. Hmm. Did they obey his voice and keep his covenant? No. No, of course they did not. They forgot about God and his promises, and that's why they created the idol of the golden calf. What does God promise to make them in verse 6 here? A kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That language might sound familiar to you. St. Peter uses similar language uh, in the New Testament in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 to 10, which you can go look up. So 1 Peter 2, 2 to 10. But there he calls all of us who have been baptized a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation who have been clothed in Christ's righteousness. So this is fulfilled for us in our baptism. All right. In what would God come to the people? And it's right here in verse 9. The Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am coming to you in a thick cloud. All right. According to this verse, in whom were the people to believe? And it says that the people may hear when I speak, God 
the Lord, speak with you, Moses, and may also believe you, Moses, forever. Now, thinking about this event, can you think of a time in the New Testament where there was a thick cloud and there was a voice from the cloud and thunders and lightnings? Hmm. Not thunders and lightnings, but certainly a cloud and a voice. And we think of the transfiguration, for example, in Matthew 17. When were the people to be ready? All right, so remember, the Lord's come to them in the third month after they've left Egypt. But when are they to be ready? Consecrate them today and tomorrow and be ready on the, verse 11, third day. What were they to be, or what were they to do to be ready? It says they were to wash their clothes and then here at the end to not be with their wives, right? To wash their clothes. Why should their clothes be washed? And here we might think of the language of baptism again from Revelation 7 or Galatians 3, 27. What do you receive in your baptism? But to be washed clean in the blood of the Lamb. Robes that are made white in your baptism as you are clothed in Christ. So this, is, of course, prefiguring that baptismal language again. Why were they not to come near to their wives? That one might be a little bit trickier to understand. But again, this is fulfilled, as we hear in the New Testament, as Christ is our bridegroom and we are his bride. And these men who are to go on the mountain have their bridegroom in their Lord. What would happen if they touched the mountain? What did he say would happen if they touched the mountain? Here it is in verse 12. Whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. And why would they die? Because they were not holy. By holy here we mean set apart by God for that purpose. Who went up on the mountain for us and died for our place? Hmm. Of course, we have that language of third day, so best guess, Jesus, of course. And describe the scene on that mountain, and now here we go with verse 16. On the third day, again, pointing us to the crucifixion, Christ upon the mountain, there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud of the mountain, a trumpet blast and an earthquake. Very similar events. You can see um, the writer to the Hebrews described these in Hebrews 18, excuse me, Hebrews 12, verses 18 to 24. Hebrews 12, 18 to 24. Very similar. Darkness blackness, and a tempest. Who was Moses to bring up with him on the mountain? It says, go and get Aaron, correct? Yes. Go and retrieve Aaron. What would Aaron be for the people? This we learn later after Moses comes down from the mountain, Exodus 28. Aaron is the first high priest. And again, can't help but hear Christ in this text. How is this related to Jesus? But he is our high priest, Hebrews 4. All right, so hopefully that's helpful. It's a good way to go through the text. You can do the same sort of questions with your children. Maybe don't know all the scripture references, but at least try to hit on the main details and then see how the text here of Exodus 19 confesses Christ. We'll end with a brief meditation. By the way, these come from the daily prayer, uh, Bible stories for daily prayer binders from the um, the Lutheran Catechetical Academy. The God of Sinai and the law is fierce and terrifying. He is the God of impenetrable darkness that no man may approach without dying. Three days were to be spent preparing for him to come upon the mountain, and this was an indication of the three days that God's own son would journey into death before arising in triumph. The cleansing of their clothing acknowledged the clothing of bloody skins, that had to be placed on Adam and Eve, and which now covers us in holy baptism. Our clothes have been washed in the blood of the one who entered the fierce darkness on that day of his death before bursting forth with life on the morning of the resurrection. Here ends our meditation. Of course, you could um, read Portals of Prayer or the Higher Things Daily Devotions uh, in its place as you pray in your own home.
Each week we also assign a hymn, and this week we were to memorize stanza one. Of course, this week has been cut very short, so it'd be hard to memorize stanza one. But let's sing uh, the whole hymn. Hopefully this works out well for you. here with the collect, which was for last Sunday, Oculi, the third Sunday in Lent. We pray it together. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today is Tuesday. Let us pray for deliverance against temptation and evil, for the addicted and despairing, for the tortured and oppressed, for those struggling with sin. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. I actually don't have my bulletin here in front of me. I'm at home. I forgot to bring one home. Don't usually do that. Um, and our prayers, though, let us keep uh, especially in mind all those uh, whose occupations and vocations have put them in harm's way. Think medical professionals, nurses, uh, but also those who are suffering perhaps economically from the impact of uh, what has going on with the coronavirus and COVID-19 disease. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the one who guides all things in heaven and on earth. We ask that you would guide the course of this world, that all those who are given to care for those who are sick and ill from the coronavirus and its disease, COVID-19, that they would receive relief, that these medical professionals would care for them with skill, and that um, healing would be brought to the nations. We also ask that you would um, provide for all those in this time of, of great need, especially be with those who are suffering under the economic impact of this disease, those who have, are unable to work as a consequence, those um, who are greatly afflicted or affected, I should say, by the way that our economy um, is suffering. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's pray the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now I'm recording this at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, hopefully I can have these out a little bit earlier in the future. Uh, but let's pray Luther's morning prayer together. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I pray that this daily prayer is a blessing to you. We'll continue it each day uh, and post it in various places so that you're able uh, to utilize it in your daily prayers at home. Um, alternatively, of course, you can just do it yourself using the prayer guide, which will continue to be available uh, on our website in the protected folder which is under the church drop-down, and you see publications. You click that. If you need the password uh, to get in, just let us let me know. Uh, either call me at 920-994-2228, extension 304, or send me an email at pastor at stjohnrandomlake.org. All right, Lord be with you all.